Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Salty Dog Podcast. <laughs> Let's get salty! Oh, yeah. no! What is up, guys? I'm Clash. He's Dookie. Hey, hey. And welcome back to another episode of the Salty Dog Podcast. Let's get salty. Always. We always got to keep it salty here. I'm never happy. No. <laughs> Happiness is for chumps. So, so how, how has your uh, week been so far? It's been all right. Um, done a little laddering. It's, it's scary out there. Yeah, you feel uh, like it's it's back to that point kind of where venturing out into the the ranked seas is a little uh, perilous. Yeah, it's it's a little perilous. It's a just it's so much goddamn mage. Yeah, it, it like the the mage cancer is spreading, and then uh, a ton of mage, and then a, a good amount of shaman, and that's also pretty scary. I have a little bit of a story for shaman later. Oh, okay. So for shaman, so we'll you get don't into see that. too much shaman going. On. Well, I guess it's, ever since the, that, the flood, the token, yeah, the token, yeah, yeah. But so you're right about mage. Oh, I guess it's just yeah, it's just ever. So we got a cat. I guess a, a my board. cat decided that he's got to sit on me right now. Cat, the cat has boarded the salty right, so, dog. Say hello. We're being say hello, we're Remy. Being, we're being boarded. Look at that. First mate, Remy, here to join the show. Anyway, yeah, mage. It's crazy right now. Yeah, no, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. It really is. I mean, it's just kind of like the one that's really going around right now is just kind of like a, a reimagining of that Gunther mage, like the, the Discover mage with, you know, they were running the Cabal Couriers. Yeah. Yeah, but I always thought, I was like, this deck is just not polished. Like, I would play it and, and like I'm like, man, the Couriers just don't seem that, that great to me. And, like, that was the first thing I tried to take out when uh, right oh yeah that, yeah that card's super slow yeah but now i think this, this tempo card yeah this this current incarnation of freeze mage or control mage or whatever you want to call it is incredibly yeah. powerful <laughs> yeah no they get it yeah. done right yeah i mean the big thing about it is that um they almost don't care what like you're doing right it, it's mm -hmm. one of those decks that kind of like i guess you could compare it to quest rogue <laughs> yeah right <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Where um you know, regardless of what's going on on the board, as long as they can do what their deck is supposed to do, then they're just yeah. going to beat you. So, mm. yeah. Anyway, that's the, yeah. the the meta there, I guess. Definitely feels that way. But um yeah, I've been doing actually a lot of uh what you call it? A uh, not tavern brawl, arena. Arena. I'm doing that's a lot the, of arena that's again. This that's is That's what it's called. Yeah, this is always where I end up mid-season. I'm just like Yeah. I just end up back in the arena. That makes sense. I've been having a lot more success with Ungoro Arena uh, lately too than I was like at the beginning of the the release, which is good. Yeah. Because I was when it getting, first came out, it really shook things up. I was getting really frustrated yeah, it, with it. It got weird. Yeah. But uh, I've been doing a lot better at that. And uh, the tavern brawl this week, spiders, spiders everywhere. Just a rehashing of of a previous tavern brawl. Actually, the last few have been rehashings which kind of yeah sucks. i don't remember what like the last new one was what was the last new? there was like a one really good one it was we i remember it being like, good but yeah. i can't remember what it was off the top of my head but uh I, i've been enjoying the spider one yeah i feel like it's less bullshit high roll <laughs> rng like just like oh lucky you you know you got that um i mean there's a little bit of it with what your uh what your spider turns into uh but in general, it's like you get a you get a beast, so yeah, play a beast. I don't know, it's it's not it's not usually two amounts. Like, yeah, so it's been fun. it's it's felt it's felt like you actually have to play with some degree of skill. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree. And I think the the biggest thing about this one is proper utilization of whatever class you choose to place hero power. Yes. Like when yes. you're just like flooding the board with your web spinners and just forgetting about your hero power, that's how you lose that brawl. Mm -hmm. You've got to use it. Yeah, my uh I had I had like a double up quest. I had win 5 tavern brawls and then I had like win 3 or 5 with mage or whatever. Uh so Almost everyone I played against was playing Hunter because they were like, "Whoa, I have beasts, so I probably should use Hunter." And yeah. uh, one guy even got Dinomancy on me like Whoa. right away, <laughs> and I was like, "I am not winning this game." 
but it didn't fucking matter because I was a mage. <laughs> And I just, I would ping off every single thing. That's all you I had just, to say was, I was a mage. So I stayed on. Matter. I just stayed on the board. Like, I always had the board. Uh, yeah. the, and it was all the hero power. That's that's what won me the game. So, yeah, no, you're. that's actually a really good... Uh, I mean, he was doing it, too, because he had Dinomancy. So, obviously, every turn, you're trying to squeeze, you know, the crazy amount of value that's packed into that hero power. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, like, you know, it just didn't matter. I would make sure that he had to play a new minion and then Dinomancy that, and then I had to turn to deal with it. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. He was never like Dinomancy onto a spider and then trade up and get mm-hmm. a thing. It was not, I never let him do that. And it, it was just because of Mage, the Mage hero power. So, yeah, yeah I mean, being able to just pick off those web spinners. Actually, the Paladin one works kind of similarly, not like quite as good. But what I would always do, like, say I'm going first, and I, w- I would be playing Paladin, and I would throw my web spinner in turn one, and they'd, you know, web spinner, coin, web spinner, which is valid. You can do that. Um, but then when it would come back to me, instead of going web spinner, web spinner, I would just make a guy. And then yeah. I've got my web spinner and a guy to trade off his two spiders. Right. And then on the following turn, I've got, I can throw out three spiders. Yes. And then I've got board. And then that so was basically, got, yeah. Where... You're preserving card advantage by yeah. taking out spiders with a minion. Right, exactly. With a, sorry, with a, with a hero power minion mm-hmm. rather than a minion from your hand. Yes. Um, uh, the really good suggestion from the comments, actually. Napetta said uh, it should have been Jeweled Macaw and not spiders. True. That's True. a new card. That's actually a new card. Yeah, I mean, it's almost so, the exact same thing, too. So, yeah. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. Macaws, and, uh, macaws everywhere. Also, shout out to uh, DJ Fresh. He said his car broke down, so he's watching the stream on the side of the road. That <laughs> oh my god, is dedication! <laughs> wow, I'm I touched. Really appreciate that. <laughs> I, be safe, though, man. I hope you're not on a highway or something. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> uh, uh, but that about does it for uh, my week. I don't really have any any great stories, unfortunately. Uh, um, you almost got 12 arena, well, almost being you got 9 arena wins. Yeah, I got 9. When you get to that point, though, you start to think, like, this could be it, you know? Yeah. Like, about around sure. 9 is when I start to feel like I could really take it all away, but I have been infinite. I'll say that. I've been doing a lot of arenas, and I've been That's infinite. Good. Yeah. That's so. good. Infinite Infinite is good. Yeah, I've been getting about 7 to, seven to 8, 9, about that range. But uh, beyond what's going on with us, there's actually some really cool stuff going on with Hearthstone. Yeah, news, that, the news is good news. Yeah, just got announced. Well, lucky for us, like, what, seven, eight hours ago, this just got yeah. announced? We're the, the bleeding edge. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's get into what the Broad just revealed for us today in our news segment. Ooh. What's Happening. Gadgets and Gazette always gets the scoop. Time is money, friend! Keep it quick, kid. I ain't got all day. Alright, so, Broad hit Twitter and YouTube today with a, a legendary announcement. Sorry, I had to, for anyone who already knows what it is. Oh! <laughs> legendary! So, what is it? No more duplicate legendaries from PAX. Oh! Dang. <laughs> Raise the light, or whatever the deity is in Warcraft. What is the deity in Warcraft? I mean, there's I don't know. Paladin's one, right? always it's always just the light. The light. The, yeah, yeah, it's always the light. True. Anyway. So, but anyway. Yeah. So uh, yeah, just just out of nowhere today on Twitter and YouTube, he he released this announcement that as long as you own a specific legendary, once this once this patch hits, which I don't know if they said exactly when it's hitting, but uh, it should be soon. When you own a specific legendary, whether you opened it or crafted it, you will not be able to open that legendary again when you buy packs for that set. So good. That's just oh my god, I can't even. I, uh, like, it, it's like it almost makes you mad because of how many times it's happened to you. <laughs> yeah. But like you can't be mad because this is only a good thing. Right. It's just I wish they had done it since the beginning. Yeah, okay, so what he's talking about is they didn't say, Bro d- er, didn't say anything about there being any sort of retroactive kind of compensation for people who've been playing the game for years and years like us uh, that have opened 
so many duplicate legendaries at yeah. this point. But again, it's not that's not a negative against them in putting it into the game. It's only just like, man, I it wish it sucks that it wasn't here sooner. Yeah, it sucks that it wasn't here sooner. It's basically all that you can really say about it. But yeah. this is such like honestly, uh, it's going to impact the game so much. Even if you don't realize it right off the bat, it's like, oh, that's kind of cool or whatever. But the the legendary pool that you know of of just shared among players in this game is going to drastically increase because instead of opening 400 dust which is not great i mean we all know the conversion rate yeah yeah, Yeah, when you know how much a legendary is worth 400 is like really yeah which is abysmal it's terrible conversion rate you've now opened up a brand new legendary i mean no guarantees of course that it's going to be one of the playable ones but you're increasing your chances of that just I, I yeah. don't know how many fold. It's just a good amount. Yeah, that, it makes me want to buy classic. Like, I don't want to buy classic packs anymore. Right. Because I literally have everything but, like, a handful of legendaries that I need. And right now it's like, you know, I could I could buy a whole bunch of classic packs, open them all. If I don't get any of the legendaries I wanted, I can disenchant everything and make the legendary I want. And then I know that I'll never get screwed and open that legendary. That's almost the best part of it for me because when yeah. a new expansion hits, I'm always put in this just like this awkward position where I'm like, I've already opened like my first fifty because I always pre-order it, so I've opened my fifty, and I'm yeah. like, I didn't get so many legendaries that I wanted, and I have this dust, and I'm sitting there like I want to open them, them, yeah, but but I want to craft them, but I also want to open them. So yep. do I buy more packs? Do I craft? Yep. What do I do? But that all goes out the window. You just craft everything you want, and then you're, you're set on that. Yeah, just you just buy as many packs as you want. Yeah. And then if you don't get what you want, make it. And then you don't have to worry. Yeah, it's just it's peace of mind. Right. Yeah. yeah it, so another it's thing. Good. Yeah, it, peace of mind is, is excellent. I rarely have that, just <laughs> in life in general. So I actually have to second that one. <laughs> uh, peace of mind is hard to come by. Uh, but another interesting little tidbit about it that was just hashed out in the comments is that um, this includes opening golden versions of the card. So, like, let's say you opened a Lyra from Ungoro, like, post this patch. You can't open now any sort of Lyra, a golden one or a regular one at all. And there were... I don't know if I like that. Well, that's what some people were saying, but the way I think of it is... Like, the next time that you get a Golden Legendary, instead of it being Lyra, it's going to be one you don't have. You know, I don't think it's nerfing... In, in other words, I don't think it's it's nerfing your chances at a Gold Legendary. I, it's just not letting you get it's, Golden Copies. It's... I mean... <laughs> I don't, I'm, I'm torn about that. I didn't actually know that. Really? Uh, well, why are in. you torn about it? Because I'm confused. Like, I didn't understand the argument against it. Okay, because no one wants to craft a golden legendary unless you're an idiot and you craft Leroy Jenkins <laughs> golden, like me. But aside from that, like, you know, I'd love a golden Tyrion. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's probably the main one. But there are a handful that'd be like, yeah, that'd be dope if that card was golden. Right. And even if I, ha- I have Tyrion, I have him and I've crafted him. I've opened him and I've crafted him. Right. Um, and uh, if I opened a golden Tyrion one day, I wouldn't be mad. Yeah, I get that. You know? I get I'd that. be like, okay, sweet. I got a golden one now. I didn't have to blow 3,200 dust. I can just disenchant my other one. Right. Uh, so basically, it's you're kind of saying the argument is for like people who, who like their specific legendary that they really like. Yeah, yeah. Like, right. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe that's maybe that's just me, but... Like, if I didn't have Golden Leroy or something, mm-hmm. I'd be like, wow, now I can't open a Golden Leroy? Like, I just, I have to make that. It is weird conceptually, for sure. Like, if the yeah. first Legendary that you open in a pack isn't Golden, then you've lost your chance to open a Golden one from a pack. I definitely get that, but... Like, do you disenchant your Legendary and then, <laughs> no. and then open a bunch of packs? Like, No, I don't because... Know. I, don't, I don't like that. I don't because... know. Because... Okay. Okay. The other argument for that is, if you open a golden legendary and it's a duplicate, and you're like, "Oh, it sucks. I already have it." You could disenchant that and make whatever legendary you want. So it won't be golden, right? But I don't know. It's like I'd rather I'd rather open a golden Tyrion than a golden Millhouse Mana Storm. 
But I can't open a golden Tyrion, and I can open a, a golden <laughs> Millhouse Bannister. Okay, no, I get it. I understand. You know? I understand where you're coming from. I'm saying. I guess my argument would really just be like the chances of opening a golden legendary are so low, but the upside of this, you know, thing that they've implemented mm-hmm. here, this new way of legendaries opening, is yeah. so beneficial. So, yeah, I mean, I, I would take the trade off. Yeah, uh, you know, like. Yeah. If I really want Golden Tyrion, I guess I'll just break down and make him. But you'd prefer that they don't have the stipulation of the Golden version. It's like, if you've yeah, got a Golden I, version, you can't open one, but, like, as long as you don't have one, then you can. Like Yeah, I would thing. definitely prefer that. No one's... Yeah. I don't know. No, no I don't know. It, it's... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I agree that it is kind of an interesting little caveat. I didn't yeah. have thought of that, but I guess it makes sense because you're yeah. not going to open anything you have. So I guess, honestly, I think it's I think it's really aimed towards people who, like, are, are, are the least concerned with which of their legendaries are golden. They just want to have a playable deck. And I really yeah. think that that's where this is pointed towards because, you know, just imagine being a much more casual player than either of us could ever be at any game. Mm-hmm. And, and just um, opening you know, your second legendary, and it's a copy of the first one you opened. And even if it's golden, you're just like, what? You know. Right. I know, but you can it. still just disenchant it yeah, and make you can. anything. You can. You know? No, I get it. I get I it. Know. I feel like that that argument alone pretty much negates the fact that they are, are going with that rule, because right. you can literally make whatever you want, but then you don't have a golden. I don't know. <laughs> from, a, from a strictly utilitarian standpoint... Mm-hmm. It makes sense. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. What they're doing, it makes sense. I agree. Personally, I, I would rather it. You'd still be able to open. No, I totally get the argument. You're not the only one. I mean, I, yeah. I scrolled through the the comments on Broad's tweet there, and there were a couple people saying, like, you know, piling on the whoa, wait, no, you can't open golden legendaries anymore if you have a copy. It is, it is definitely weird. It's not something I, I would have expected them to put into like the stipulation of this. Yeah, I didn't even like think about it. Yeah, but I, I don't. I didn't see that on the the news page. So you you must have read that in like the mm-hmm. the teats. The yes, fine. yeah, I read it in the comments on Broad's tweet. Yeah, yeah. I, I I was like, I just want to see what people are saying about this because I knew some people would be complaining, and that that was one of the complaints. And there, there are others, <laughs> but um, so that's not actually the only thing that he even revealed in his video. Uh, the other thing is uh, the what they're calling the Greater Crater promo, which I've got up there if you're watching the VOD or if you're here with us live. Um, they are kind of throwing, you know, like salt bang some extra packs onto uh, when you're buying, um, you know, like the card pack bundles. Uh, so if you buy uh, the original pack bundle of seven packs, they throw two extra on. Um, if you buy the 15 one, you get five extra. If you buy the 40 one, you get 12 extra and the 60 pack one, you get 18 extra. Uh, ends up being a lot. Yeah. The more you you invest. Yeah. Yeah. With I mean, this is a pretty standard, uh, mobile game kind of marketing scheme. I've seen this on a ton of games. Uh, and it makes sense that they, they would eventually start to implement, you know, occasional sales on their product. It's it's kind of interesting that this is almost like the first one we've seen, other than the kind of like the newbie, like beginner pack that they implemented yeah. uh, that gave you a legendary, which, by the way, speaking of duplicate legendaries, I got a duplicate of Scenarius, and I couldn't have been Same. more angry. Same. Not Scenarius, <laughs> but I got, yeah. Yeah, I got Grom. Well, what's yeah. interesting is Hearthstone already has that bonus pack thing built in to their pricing structure right for the you know the more you buy the more bonus you get but now it's like bonus bonus right yeah. so they're taking they're taking the mobile game you know scheme to the next level or which is you... obviously because we're we're in a stagnant part of the expansion and they're trying to move some packs so yeah it, exactly i was about to say or yeah. if you're an internet lurker and commenting on broad's tweet or on the reddit you're saying that this is so that they drain everyone's money before before they implement the new legendary rules yes yes they are they're just they're sticking a pipe into people's wallets and they're just draining the money out. <laughs> these people are not spending money of their own free will. Definitely not. I have to buy packs now. I don't you know have to. You. You, you are being forced to. Uh, no, I, I just I hate that mentality. It's right. like it's a, it's a business. Like no shit. They're gonna like yeah. Businesses shouldn't make money. No, you that's can... crazy. 
I, it's still it's super generous of them to do the legendary thing. It's super generous of them to do yeah. the extra the the greater crater promo. But uh, yeah, exactly what you're saying. You're you're crazy if you think they're doing it at you know a net loss, and they shouldn't because then Blizzard wouldn't exist, and where would we be then? Do you like, do you like this game, or, <laughs> or are you just like complaining? But uh, if you haven't seen the video yet, go check it out. Broad's super psyched in it, as as he does. Uh, he says, uh, combined, these two changes represent a material difference to the experience and fun of opening Hearthstone packs. And I agree, Broad. I agree. Material. Wow. Yeah, right. What a, what a buzzword. Uh, speaking of how I was looking through the comments, though, there was uh, he actually did reply to somebody. Uh, with this question here, which is very interesting. I mean, this isn't news, but what they asked was, are you guys making another solo adventure? And he responded with a confirmation of what we've heard before, which is single-player missions will be part of expansions going forward. So, uh, again, it's not something new. We've heard this before, but it's just nice to see, uh, you know, confirmation that when this new set comes out, we're going to have some real you know, uh, content to chew, you know, to get yes. through. And that is very yeah. exciting to me. Yeah. I, that's, that's the main reason I've always liked adventures. Uh, I mean, aside from the fact that you just, you, you pay whatever and you get all the cards no matter mm -hmm. what. I mean, that's nice. Um, but I think the main thing I liked about adventures was like doing the raid or whatever. And, uh, you know, it would make sense that they would have a, a, you know, a raid or some kind of adventure for this next expansion if it is, in fact, Ice Crown. Right. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, man, I, I really that's hope. That's good. I, yeah. I think it's the best of both worlds. Because, you know, when, a, like when a Black Rock Mountain came out, that's a good example. Because I, I love that area and wow. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh man, I can't wait to like fight all these bosses and yeah. like, see what their cool mechanics are and see how they relate to how they were in the games and stuff. Uh, and it, it like it kind of like world built Hearthstone. Oh, absolutely. Almost more because, than anything else. I mean, you yeah. get none of that from Ladder. Exactly. You get none of that from Ladder and you get none of that from opening packs, really. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I always feel like when an expansion comes out, it's just like, here's a bunch of new cards. It's it's it feels uh it feels very impersonal yeah and very mechanical. It's just like buy packs, open packs. I agree. maybe make a deck. Yeah, day it, it's one. so crazy to me to think of adventures as like a dead relic of the past of Hearthstone. Yeah. I'm really glad that they're bringing it back in some capacity because I, I think a great example is just to look at the two different versions of Elise that we've had. So. In League of Explorers, which was an adventure, of course, uh, Elise was a character, and she interacted with you and helped you get the Staff of Orig Origination back, and she yeah. became, like, this personality, this, like, part of the game. And, yeah. like, now she's back, it, but in what in what capacity is she back? She's just a card now. Yeah. Like, she yeah, has like, one line. An yeah. Like, if you're not following, like, the stuff that Blizzard... Like, the promotional materials... Um, and getting like the lore or whatever that yeah. way, and if you like, if you just it, it gives you something to do on day one that to feel like there's new content. Like yeah. you'll probably be able to buy like one pack on day one or whatever, and still do whatever adventure they provide. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like it's gonna be uh, a thing where they where they probably provide you with cards. You know. Yeah, I would think so, because that way it's, like, a nice, like, get your feet wet in the expansion. Like, here's some pre-built decks with, like, some ideas of where we were going with the card design. Like, that, yeah. that's how I hope that they And that's going. usually what they did in, yeah. uh, in the uh, in the adventures. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm really excited about this, because, I don't know, it always, there was always a bittersweet feeling on day one of, of a, an expansion where you're just opening packs, because mm -hmm. you're, like... I gotta spend this money and hope I get what I want and maybe make a deck and then lose some games and then I don't mm -hmm. know how I feel about this, but this is gonna be like, I have something to do, something that's gonna be fun regardless of what I open or whatever. Yeah. And I've, I always enjoyed that. Me too. Yeah, I miss adventures. I mean, uh, they, you know, ultimately I do think it's gonna be better to have more cards in the pool, uh, cutting out adventures, which only added, like, a fraction of what an expansion adds, but, um, there was definitely something lost when adventures went, so I hope that 
what they're bringing in with expansions now is obviously it's not going to be quite as in depth uh, as as adventures that we were used to before. But I hope that it's really something to get you, you get engaged yeah. in. You know. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's what I'm hoping for. I, if it's if it is Ice Crown, that's going to be really cool. Like right. seeing those bosses again in Hearthstone. Uh, one thing we actually forgot to mention, which Nepeta pointed out, so uh, we appreciate that. Um, in a new expansion, you'll always get a new legendary within the first ten packs. Y yes, yeah, actually, that is another thing. Which, which is nice, because it's definitely happened before where you're busting open those packs day one, and you're just sweating like, I'm not going to get one. I'm just not going to get yeah. one. It's going to be horrible. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. So, it's so funny that I skipped it too because I have it right here. Like, say that, and then <laughs> thanks for reminding us. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like yeah. yeah, I'll just ignore what I wrote down. Yeah, whatever. But no, that that is great because then that that adds almost the same thing that we were saying that we wanted from like the single player missions, like the excitement of when it first comes out, and you've got your first ten packs, and you're just like, I'm getting one. I'm yeah. it's, I'm getting yes. one. It's yeah, gonna be. Here. Yeah. And if it's in your first pack, you're you're like, oh god. Who there? That, that means like once the first legendary is out of the way, like then every other pack could be a legendary. You know, mm -hmm. you can you know get I mean? two legend. You could easily could. get two legendaries in your first ten packs you because could. one of them's yeah. guaranteed. It's guaranteed, and the other so, is out of ten yeah. packs. Not not a bad shot. Right. No, so. I know it's gonna happen. There's gonna be like a like a Hearthstone Reddit page of I got more than one legendary in my first ten packs. I can see it now. Yeah. <laughs> see it now i can see it now so there was uh there was one more thing from the comments on uh ben brode's tweet uh when he when he released this that i i just had to bring up just because it was almost just like a stroke of luck how i ended up pausing the video right on just like a classic smug broad face here and what what really struck me about it is that the last tweet that he had done before this release was, uh, if anybody follows Broad on Twitter, you'll remember when he released the list of um, users he's been having to block on Reddit because it's this one guy that keeps renaming uh, himself some version of, like, Ben sucks. Like, you really suck, Ben. No, you really suck, Ben. You suck for <laughs> real, Ben. And, like, I just, I just happened to pause it when he's kind of like, you know, he's got, like, his eyebrow yeah. up, and he's just kind of got this smug grin. He's like, who who sucks now, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. With this awesome, awesome announcement. I just love that. Yeah, no, this is all all really good news. I'm pumped. I just, whenever they announce stuff like this, I'm just like, I want it now. Give it to me now. Yeah, but that's basically the spot that we're in. I mean, we're about two months away from... The new expansion we're about two months into angora we're like basically falling right in the center here and uh we're starting to to not see the shore on either side you know yeah yes the, the salty pearl that, that, that is was way a good, uh, in the depths that's a good nautical metaphor <laughs> but it really feels like what the blizzard's gonna switch gears and really start trying to drive the hearthstone hype train towards looking forward to the new expansion uh, Brode even mentions in the video uh, being excited to announce the new expansion, and it's just like oh, just hearing him saying "announce" yeah. and "new expansion." You know, it's it's starting to happen. Yeah, yeah, it's happening. Yeah, and uh, he said that um, he's he thinks that the new changes are are going to be particularly good for the new set, which has some people wondering you know kind of what that means does that mean that maybe this new set has even more legendaries than we've seen before and maybe that even kind of factored into the timing of this decision and why this particular decision because they could have done anything right to kind yeah. of increase the the like rewards that we get back from the game like daily login rewards like stuff that a lot of other games do so just kind of an interesting wording probably looking too much into it just like the yeah. internet will but yeah you know, I just I don't know why this just now dawned on me, but if if it is indeed Ice Crown or Return of the Lich King, we're finally gonna get an Arthas card, right? Yeah, I yeah. don't know. I just that, that just occurred. Like just to me. hit you. Yeah, that just hit me. We're we're gonna have an Arthas card, which is cool. Right? Do you so. think we're gonna have a Death Knight class? <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> and it's really sad. I don't either. And it's so sad. Yeah. Uh. I think we might uh, play against a Death Knight class. Yeah, which we already kind of have. 
Yeah, like the that's Otteris true. Death Chargers, those cards that we just really want to exist. Yes, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, Nax. Nax had some Death Knights. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What was I mean, that? What is that card? Stuff, it's like but... a two mana two three charge. Oh yeah, the think... Eben. Was oh, it Eben. Yeah, Eben Death Charger. Death Charger. Eben Dreadsteed. Dreadsteed. Death Charger. I think it was Dreadsteed. Dreadsteed. I, I can't think it was remember. Dreadsteed. But what was it, though? It's a, uh, that Nax card. It was a 2-mana, 2-3, hate charge. It was a 2-3 charge, and when yeah. it died, you took damage. Like 3 damage so, or like, something. That's so That was so like the good. drawback, but oh my god. That is like the the epitome of a hunter card. Like or not like a oh, dookie a, card. A just to, card. Yeah, yeah. Not a hunter <laughs> yeah. card. Let me say a dookie card, because that's confusing. That's yeah. That's exactly your play style. Oh my god, absolutely. Yeah. It's like this is busted and can attack right away. I might take damage later, but that's fine. Yeah. But uh this is just a super cool thing for them to I think they're gonna start that that drip feed process of like giving us like what's coming up to keep keep people like, you know, interested as as the Ungoro meta sort of comes to a stalemate yeah. here. And hopefully we'll get even more cool stuff. I'm I'm yeah. ready. Yeah, keep, keep I'm, them I'm coming, bro. I am totally ready. My but, uh, body is ready. <laughs> that is enough being positive about Hearthstone, though. So time to switch over to our saltiest card segment. Let's see. Uh, in this segment, we uh, we tell you guys what's been really pissing us off to see when we're playing the game. Yeah, yeah, you gotta be kidding me! <laughs> All right, as always, you are up first. All right, so this is a weird choice, uh, at least Trailblazer. Yeah, I, I, w I was thought it was a little strange. This one was more of just like, I had a moment today where I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. So I didn't realize that the pack could give you cards from other classes. Oh, you didn't? No, because oh, yeah. I, have, I have not encountered it that many times, and... Uh, you know, you know my decks. Usually the game's over before they're, you know, they've dug down to their pack or whatever. Mm. Uh, so, uh, I'm playing this Shaman today, and my board is stacked, man. I'm like, I'm ready to unleash the Onslaught. As you and, do, uh, as you do. Out, out comes the Volcano, and I'm just like, cool. That's <laughs> great. Uh, and uh, he, he had like... I think he had like just opened his pack because it wasn't the next turn that he did it. Wait, how much mana is Volcano? Volcano's five with Overload two. Okay, yeah. so he must have already opened his pack then, because I flood the board again. Very next turn, Volcano from the pack, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, I see how it is. <laughs> so, uh. This this game was really frustrating. I actually ended up winning, which was I, I don't e well. It was mid range paladin, which is a great deck, but it was token shaman. So, but it was token shaman with volcano. So I think he was doing like a weird variant. Oh, okay. Anyway, a, a more a more control variant. Uh, so I uh, I put out a Tyrion Forging. Uh, he had out a the stealth wasp thing with poisonous. Okay. But I had a redemption. And he had nothing else out on the board. And I was like, I, I need to play Tyrion. So I did Tyrion with Redemption. Um, and he had the Stealth Wasp. But I was like, well, you can't kill Tyrion. You gotta hit my Divine Shield. Mm -hmm. um, and then he drops Eater of Secrets. Which was like, what the fuck, man? Well, that's the Counter Mages. I think this deck was yeah. built specifically to Counter Mage. Sounds like yeah. it. Uh, but that wasn't from the pack. So then, he Living Manas. Oh, jeez. And then he evolves his living manas. No. And I'm just like... First of all, I was like, where the fuck did you get living mana? But it was obviously from the pack. Yeah. So uh -huh. that's when I was like, you get shit from other classes? That's crazy. Well, what he really did there was prevented him from ever being able to get his mana back. It shouldn't have mattered. <laughs> Yeah. But somehow, I don't even know how I won that game. I think that's exactly how you won it, is he took his, away all his own yeah. mana crystals. Yeah. yeah, but he was, I mean, I didn't, I couldn't clear his board. Like what, Those those trents are two mana two twos, right? When you summon yeah. them from living mana. Evolving a two mana, two, a two drop to a three drop 
is not that worth they have been, uh, nerfing his, your his mana for the rest of the game. Yeah. Because he's... I mean, yeah, yeah. It screws you over mana-wise. Yeah. Um, and then... Uh, he, I think he got an Ancient Watcher in the bunch. Yeah. Which, you know, that's a bummer. Wait, to I him. don't think he could have gotten Ancient Watcher because it, uh, Ancient Goro Pack gives you and Goro cards. No, no, he got Ancient Watcher from evolving his trends. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Well, so I mean that okay. was that was that was bad for him. Yeah. Uh, so I ended up winning that game, but uh, it was and it just it was just like every just it was crazy. The stuff he got in the pack was just crazy, and I was like, this this has made me mad. So. Yeah. Usually, I mean, I can't tell you how many times somebody's opened a pack. And gotten Vile Spine Slayer. Like, I feel like that's a super common card for them to get for some reason. Mm -hmm. It's just, I see a pack come out, and I'm like, you got a Vile Spine Slayer now? Because I've just seen it so many times. Well, the rarity of the pack is, like, super jacked up, right? Oh, yeah, that is is also true. But I just feel like I've, I've personally seen a disproportionate amount of Vile Spines come out of that. Which, I mean, it's an incredible card. But uh, I usually, I mean, you're going to get value out of, you know, if you open a full pack, you're going to get some value out of those yeah. five cards for sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, I kind of miss playing her, actually, from my uh, Kazakis Highlander quest mm-hmm. deck with uh, with Priest. Yeah, that's a good card for that. Getting, like, two or three copies of the uh, of the pack for, with Shadow Visions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty that's awesome. Insane. All right, so this week, uh, this is the card that's got me salty. It's equality again. <laughs> I would, just, I'm so done with this card. It happened again to me just just earlier today, and I was just sitting here like trying to come up with my card for this segment, and I'm just like, I'm it's equality again. I have to. It's equality I, again. There's there's a lot of paladins and they've all yeah. taken on a more of a control stance these days mm-hmm. and they're all running this and pyromancer and and my boards are just dying and it's a sad time. Yeah. It's just, it's such a yeah. busted busted card and <laughs> setup just to do that whole thing. It's a little bit of a cop out to bring the same card from last week, but seriously, it's the salty card and this is the card that's got me salty. So <laughs> It's fair. Yeah, I actually, wanted to, to to do something for Mage this week, but uh, I feel like we've covered it. Like I think yeah. we've already done Ice Block, Frost Nova, uh, Shady did Primordial. Yeah, Glyph. Shady did Glyph when we had him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I totally would have done Primordial Glyph today because I was playing a game against a Mage and I went super wide on like turn two. I was like, there's no way you're going to fucking stop me. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I was using my aggro paladin deck, which just yeah. does not work anymore. Uh, it was like it was like two Lost in the Jungle, uh, Bloodsail, Corsair, Patches. It, I, it was like an insanely huge board for turn two. Uh-huh. I was like, the fuck you going to do? Like, I'm just going to start murdering <laughs> you. So, turn two, he primordial glyphs into an arcane explosion. I conceded. <laughs> well, I was like, I'm, I'm out. That's the thing with mage spells, is they're all so powerful, and there are so many spells that do a similar thing, right? You've yeah. got arcane explosion, blizzard, uh, f- flame strike, meteor, uh, even, you know, cone of cold in certain circumstances. Like, you've got so many AoE spells yeah. that when they use it, you can almost be guaranteed that they're going to have the option of one of them. Yeah, but it was turn two. Right, yeah, like, I It understand. had to be Arcane Explosion. Right, because it was zero then after. Yeah, yeah. It's just, that be so No, bad. that does that does make it. That was know, one of those, like, I worse. couldn't control my hand from clicking concede. <laughs> like, just auto-conceded. Um, At least like, you yeah. controlled it from clicking on install. <laughs> which is, <Yeah. laughs> you've not been able to do that before. Yes, it, it is, that is true. I have Rage uninstalled Hearthstone once oh really only once okay well, I, I rage uninstalled league of legends like three to five times <laughs> before the but final time when we realized that that's it's just not uh, worth it that's that's what's called a bad game so <laughs> unless you enjoy it then hey go for it <laughs> I mean, you can do whatever you want but it's still a bad game i mean yeah. it's <laughs> oh man it, i i just admit personally that i was terrible at that game oh yeah I, we were we were awful. Yeah, I just it's like our fault. 
It's the game's fault for not being intuitive in the slightest. That's why it's a bad <laughs> game. It's the most unintuitive game I've ever played. I would just I like when I, I would get my character's rotation down in that game. And I would know what I was supposed to do, but as soon as it got, like, hairy and someone was on me and I needed to perform better than ever, I'd just be like, you know, yeah. doing something like stop that. Street. What'd you say? I hope you didn't just No, I just, I just purposefully went up and down on the, on the slides. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's a different game. But uh, my story yeah. about equality happened uh just before this stream started which is probably why i'm still so pissed about it and it was an arena thing and you know there are certain you have less control over how you have to try to win a game in arena because you don't have a great deck and you don't have more than you know you don't have a bunch of win conditions so uh just the way my hands were dealt i i just was having to go kind of wide on this paladin yeah it was a paladin mirror and so, you know, I'm just making my dudes, and I'm just trying to get whatever I can to stick, because he got this insane Murloc start with just, like, Grimscale Chum, and yeah. it was basically like I was playing the constructed version of that deck. <laughs> and, um, you know, I finally get that board presence that I need, and I've got, you know, I, I had to ended up drafting some high-health minions, like, like a Avian Watcher. Like you were saying from before yes. and and stuff like that, uh, and I'm like I think I can I can take these out, and I've got like blessing of kings and stuff to to really just take the board and just phew, equality and it was all over. That's in that card, man. Yeah. You just yeah. you can't deal with it because no. I didn't have any other option but to be putting these minions out or else I was gonna get pounded by Murlocs. It's just yeah, it yeah. just it doesn't matter. I guess the only defense is those like static buffs. So like if there's something buffing all pirates or all Murlocs, I think that gets around it. Do they they stay I I think they have to. It's uh I actually tried to outdoor peacekeeper a tar creeper and that it's the same thing. Right. They, because he's getting he's getting a static effect like because it is this turn because it is the opponent's turn he's got plus two attack right like, but that's like the way this game works is really weird sometimes like okay so that there's that interaction but that is something that like turns on and off so it's like refreshing itself between turns if you will but okay. if you aldor peacekeeper and rage minion they go to one and they, they don't do they don't get their attack back unless you heal them to full and enrage them again, like refreshing right. their. Yes, because thing. I, I, I have I have studied this extensively. Because <laughs> I need to I need to know how things work. No, oh, I agree. Yeah, and uh, with enrage, it's like enraging is a thing that happens. Like, so the only way for them to get enraged is for them to take damage from full like that's just the only way right and what that does is it then applies a buff and so when you aldor peacekeeper them down you're taking that applied buff and negating it right uh same with with crystal core which is weird the crystal core works that way mm -hmm. uh crystal core is not a static effect like you'd think it would be it's like when the minion comes out they get this thing applied to them and they become a five five Mm -hmm. So you could equality uh, a rogue with with crystal core out, and they would all go to one health. Mm -hmm. um, what are some other examples? Like, it, well, you know, there's obvious stuff that's, you know, battle cry right. gets plus whatever. What I'm thinking of right now is what what if you equality a murloc aboard and there was a war leader on it? Would they all yes. still have two health? Yes. Are you sure? Because because it's not doing anything to stop what that card says right. that card says hmm. the murlocs have this Th that's the thing they don't they, they didn't have anything like they didn't have like a buff applied to them you know yeah they just they just have this static thing that's happening yeah you know what i mean no, I, that's how i would think it should work i but just then, didn't think that it would <laughs> that shit will heal a minion mm -hmm. which is like applying Right. Something, you know, it's not, that's like, oh, well, is it static or is it not? Like, mm -hmm. you know, if uh, if you've got a Murloc 
that that has what's war leader give him uh, plus, plus two, one health plus one yeah plus one health so if you've got a murloc that's normally got one health and then it gets war leadered and then you deal one damage to it if that war leader dies that murloc should die yeah i agree taken, it should lose that one health that mm -hmm. it that it's only got from war leader but somehow it heals them yeah so i don't know it's there's some things where it's like when you when you come from a magic background you're like this is dumb. Sketchy. Sketchy. This is yeah. Sketchy. <laughs> yeah, I think that I really do think that the um the arrange mechanic is sketchy because of just how the card is is worded. Yeah, I it's agree. like they have plus three attack when they're enraged. So is he you, mad or not? <laughs> so like uh, take take a you know, Amani Berserker or whatever. If yeah. you So when he's enraged, he's got five attack because his base is two and then he gets plus three. If you Punisher him, he should have four attack because his base attack is one and is being modified by plus three because he's enraged. That yeah. I feel like that's how that should work. And I mean, enraged isn't like a busted mechanic as it is, and I don't think that would even no. make it playable. So no, we don't need to yeah. crack down on enrage <laughs> or anything right now. And the same thing with uh, the whole buffing of health, actually healing a minion. That yeah. that is really frustrating, and actually the most frustrating time when that happens is with Finja plays, where Finja pulls out war leaders. Yeah, and the war leaders actually not only prevent Finja from dying if he's taken lethal, like to up to like a certain amount, mm -hmm. but then if you kill off the war leaders before Finja, Finja stays at the modified health. Yep. It's oh, it's, it's that that makes that makes yeah. no sense. I me, agree because but... he's being helped. By his helpy helpers, yes. and when they go away, <laughs> yeah, he no longer exactly. has the help. Yeah, you know, totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's. I don't know. Backslash rant over. So it's over. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Uh, card creation challenge. Card creation challenge. I think that's where we're at. So if you're listening for the first time, uh, we have we always do for the last segment of our show. Uh, something that we cooked up called the Card Creation Challenge, where we pose like a prompt the week before for you to follow some rules to create a card, a uh, Hearthstone card, and just see how creative we can get with some with some fun ideas. So let's check out what we've got this week. Prepare yourself for the ultimate test. Alrighty, so first up here. Uh, I will remind everybody what my challenge was last week. Uh, last week, our show was very Ice Crown themed because of the whole the rumors going around about maybe the next set will be Ice Crown. Maybe Blizzard's kind of you know giving us some hints that that's going to be the next set. So I decided why not do Ice Crown raid bosses for our challenge this week. Um, so normally what we'll do is we'll take the top six of the cards that we get submitted and we normally get a decent amount, but I guess maybe Ice Crown's not so popular. Maybe, <laughs> maybe not, maybe not so many people yeah. have played WoW. We usually get more. Yeah. More than this. Because we actually didn't even get to six submissions this week. So everyone who submitted is in. You're all winners. <laughs> Uh, but um, let's go ahead and do this first one here. This one is from Linuson, uh, who gives us the Lich King. Seven mana, six, six, death rattle, equip Frostmourne. And when he first sent this to me, I was like, what's well, Frostmourne? Because he didn't have a Frostmourne image. But turns out, Linuson, who's a, a very frequent submitter uh, to the card challenge segment, and pr I think has done it every time, was doing a little world building here. And Frostmourne was the weapon that he made for Dookie's challenge last week. So Which I've got it up here too, yep. So uh, when the Lich King dies, you equip Frostmourne, which is a 3-3 weapon that when it dies, death rattles to give to change your hero power to summon a 2-2 ghoul. Which is very, very on brand. The Lich King dies, you yeah. get Frostmourne. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's kind of like a, another Tyrion sort of thing, which makes sense cuz they're they're kind of you know they're kind of yeah. opposites all those paladin people like i think of you know arthas slash lich king uther and like baron mograine and like all those like og paladins 
yeah. they should all if they if they're gonna be cards, I feel like they should relate to each other in some way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind pretty of, cool. Kind of parallel each other. Yeah. But yeah, this I mean this card might be underpowered. Yeah, it, it's got a lot of value packed into it, for sure. Yeah. Um I mean getting a three three weapon from the death rattle of a pretty decently statted minion who also benefits from all the death rattle things that you could benefit from like Nazoth or mm-hmm. you know I mean this class I think he used a custom class from hearthcards.net which is uh, what we use and I think what most people who submit to the show use to make their cards they have some custom uh, you know card backs and stuff that's what you're seeing there if you're like what the heck is that uh, yeah. it's a custom death knight from from that site but um yeah I mean I I think I think that this could go in a certain type of deck, you know, a more control-based deck with uh, yeah, uh, with, some, with some death rattle synergy. Yeah, I think there are synergies that could make this pretty good. I mean, you this is this gives you a lot like like a very long-term amount of sustain and value. Like you yeah. got a big minion, then you got a weapon, then you're making ghouls. Yeah, you can even time it so you use your hero power and then you break your weapon on whatever and then you get your new hero power. Oh, well, that's the play. That. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's what you do, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. thanks for that. Uh, you know, I'm glad somebody did an Arthas card because it had to be done. It's Ice Crown. He's Yeah, Arthas. I think if if uh, Linuson didn't do it, I probably would have done it. I, I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> I'm happy with what I came up with. So. Me too. So, onward. Up next, we have a card from Dougie Fresh, currently watching the show from the side of the road. Hope you're still alive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't a... seen him in chat in a while. Oh, no. Uh, hopefully, he's just in his car driving safely home. Uh, we have Blood Queen Lanifel, who is a 7-mana 5-8 neutral legendary. Whenever this minion attacks, deal 5 damage to a random enemy. So, uh, cool. he, he said it. You said it. It's like a Ragnaros, kind of. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, it's it's where when when I look at it, I'm like, that's just really good. But does it fit into any yeah. sort of specific game winning archetype? And I don't think it necessarily does. But that's not to say it's a bad card. It's just if you it's, need a strong seven drop, you general. use this. You know, it's too broad. Yeah, it's Other very card. broad, but it's very yeah. board control heavy for sure. But how good is it, like? Like, Ragnaros was such an obvious choice, Mm -hmm. but this might be less so... Well, I think it depends on on when exactly the deal 5 damage thing happens. Because, think of it this way, think, like, there's there's two minions on board, they're both 5-5s just for the sake of simplicity. So you have three targets that the 5 damage can hit. But, if she actually deals her damage first... So, like, you attack a 5-5, five five, mm-hmm. and then it has a 50-50 flip to hit the other one, then I think that this card is really strong. And I think that's how it would have to be, because if it triggers before her damage hits, then she could actually kill the thing that she's trying to hit. Yes. So. Um, and the way that it's worded, I think that's what it sounds like. Yeah. Like, you, you know, you point the arrow, and then she slides in... And then it triggers, you know, as if the uh, like there was a secret that, that same mm-hmm. that same animation. So she she starts to attack, and then it triggers, and then the the whoosh comes out of her and smashes something. Right, but what I'm saying is, could the whoosh hit the thing that you've just pointed at? Yeah, I think what would happen is it would hit that thing. It would take the five, and then regardless if it was dead, it would sit there at like negative health or whatever, and then she would still hit it. That makes this card. W- way worse than what i was saying which is that she would hit first and then deal her damage so it kind of depends if it's your version then i don't think it's so great if it's if it's my version then i think that it's pretty pretty damn awesome yeah um i think you're still i think you're still probably at at the mercy of the randomness of Mm -hmm everything if everything on the board being a potential target and you know if something's got 10 health you could attack it and hope that yeah the damage hits it and then she hits it so i mean it, it does specify enemy though so this is always going to be something good which is primo yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah that would be yeah. that would be terrible if it wasn't 
Well, maybe maybe Dougie will chime in in the chat, tell us exactly which one he had in mind. But uh, regardless, I really like the idea behind the card. It's um, it's more fun and interactive than Rag, you know? Yeah, absolutely. But it gives you that same sort of flip mechanic. Mm-hmm. All right, so moving on from Steph Van Essen. This, this is a very in-depth submission here that spans across three cards. Um, so... I will I will take my time and go through them here. It's Prince Valinar, which I was gonna do the Blood Brothers or whatever they were called, the Vampire <laughs> Wing, but uh, they were done. So here we go. Um, it is a nine mana two five battle cry to summon. Uh, his name's Prince Valinar, and his battle cry summons two uh, other princes named Prince Keliseth and Prince Taldoran. Uh, and this card is the... Prince Valinar, though, is the only card that at least starts with this text, which is Invocation of Blood, which gives him plus four attack and taunt. So he actually comes down as a six-five taunt, like, I guess, a Lord of the Arena. At the end of your turn, you pass the Invocation of Blood to a friendly Prince Keliseth or Taldoram. And so I'm they a, become the 6-5. Right. Time. And they each have the text that at the end of your turn, they pass it to one of the other two, which I really like how this works, because for anybody who has no idea what these raids were all about, this fight was particularly interesting as far as raid mechanics go, because what you had to do was there was this ball of blood, like this just magical ball that would slowly float around the room and get close to the ground. And if it hit the ground, it was bad. Yeah, bad stuff happened. I can't remember what it was, but it was bad. It was just like a lot of damage or something. Yeah. And so what you had to do was play basically like beach ball at a Nickelback concert <laughs> and go freaking bounce the ball between players in the raid. So that mm-hmm. it never touched the ground, it, it and it, I just like that you were able to to like work that into these cards. Yeah, it's yeah, very they're, cool. yeah, they're bouncing the beach ball. Yeah, uh, it's. I mean, you're getting three bodies. Uh, they they keep changing who has taunt, which is interesting because it protects the other ones and and it makes you have to divide up your damage. Right. Which isn't a bad effect. Um, nine man is a lot, but you're getting kind of a lot. So I don't I don't know how this would how this would play out. I think there's one one major thing that makes me think that it's not so good is the fact that if you kill the minion, which is the, gonna be the one that has taunt, so the most vulnerable to onboard trading, mm-hmm. then they die with the with the yeah. invocation, right? No more beach ball. Yeah, and so then you're just left with two two fives. Which Yeah. 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 That's a good point. But I, yeah, I just, once you yeah, yeah, once you kill that one, it's pretty much fun's over. Yeah, I feel like it, it should be something like, you know, they can't be targeted or stealth or something other than taunt, so that the one that has the attack buff is the one that's the most protected. Yeah, yeah, but still yeah, a super cool sense. idea. I mean, they look like they're small, you know, two fives or whatever. When when you add their stats together. For nine mana, it's actually incredible to get that much board uh, a presence. Six fifteen, yeah. uh, actually six a ten ten fifteen. If you well, count yeah, the, because uh, you've got the invocation. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I mean, I probably wouldn't even be a bad card to play. Just even if the invocation minion's going to die right away, yeah. they have to expend resources to get rid of it, and it's just a very cool idea in general. Oh, by the way, just shout out to Evolve Shaman. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because you could do that on uh, turn ten. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So that's Get pretty. Get yourself a, a Deathwing and two Pit Fighters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Be good to go. But I mean, that's my favorite thing about this this challenge, though, is you get to see some really, like, out-there stuff. Like, mechanics you'd never see in Hearthstone. Yeah, and it just, it just really shows you how much you can really do with a card game. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. No, good submission. Yes, thanks. Thanks for that, Steph Van. And... Up next, we have the favorite here. We just unanimously just love this card. It's from I'm a Dragon. <laughs> and uh, it's got Deathbringer Sarfang, which was one of yeah. the best fights in yes. the raid to begin with. What a great fight. Uh, it's a warrior. So, and so, so emotional. Oh, feels, my God. It's, man. It was too emotional. Woo. 
We named him Dranosh. Okay, we're not going to go down that rabbit hole. He's up. like, I, I laid my son's body to rest in a grand. And he's like, you're not my son. I'll kill you. <laughs> so good. Shout out to, to <laughs> wow nerds out there. So uh, we have Deathbringer Sarfang, which is a legendary warrior minion. Eight mana, six, seven. Battle cry, summon a two, two blood beast for every damaged minion on the board. Uh, and blood beasts are two, two charges that can't attack the enemy hero the turn this is summoned, which that is a super cool way to do this and make it not an OTK thing, but a board yes. control thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, warrior is already so about the control, um, mm hmm you know, controlling the board, and and it's usually the control warriors that that synergize with the deal damage to everything, mm -hmm. uh, you know, gimmick. Yes. So yeah. It's, yeah. this fits. Yeah, this you, fits right in there. Whirlwind, uh, the ghoul, the unstable yeah. ghoul, all that, all those mechanics of just trying to damage everything. Sleep with the fishes, like that whole mechanic. Mm -hmm. Like King Mosh looks at this card and cries. This is what King Mosh should yes. like. Like this is King Mosh when it's good and has an actual interesting interactive mechanic going on. Yeah, totally. So. So yeah, I mean he he's obviously he's a little understated. But on a, you know, in a perfect world, you get six 2-2 two -two charges and mm -hmm. just wipe your opponent out. Which is like an Anixia effect on crack because they're all 2-2s. It's, two -twos. Yeah. it's but, like Anixia, but, you know, good. Right, yeah, because Anixia is pretty much not. Uh, yeah, I mean, you just get that instant. What, what's really crazy to me and maybe might need to be dialed back a bit is that it's your damaged minions, too. I might put in damage enemy minions just to make it just to cement it as this is a defensive play not to get like an insane board swing that somebody can't come back from but yeah uh, i don't know yeah it's, really it's hard to say uh, you know if in, in practice this would be totally busted or really balanced it's hard to say it's like it's like unleash the like imagine this unleash the hounds with two twos you know yeah but but unleash the hounds can go face so you know yeah exactly but, yeah, they've been doing that a lot with the uh, with charge being like, all right, it's got charge, but it can't attack the hero. Yeah. And I think that's smart. Yeah. It's a good way to do it, you know. I agree. Yeah. So that was that was a really cool idea. Thanks for that. Uh, up, we always save our two submissions. We always make cards too, and we save them for the last. Um, and yours is up first, there, Dookie. All right. So uh, I thought it would be cool to do the gunship battle for my ice <laughs> crown. I remember we we farmed that like crazy because I want I wanted a shield from Gunship. Oh, I remember how bad you wanted that shield because I was stuck with that old man face shield from Ulduar, mm -hmm. and I just I wanted that goddamn Gunship shield. Uh, so anyway, I decided to make a make a card based on that raid. Hold on, wait, I, I need to paint the picture here really quick. Uh, the way that you got loot from Gunship was not, uh, different from other things because there wasn't, like, a corpse for you to loot, so there was, a, yeah. there was like, a treasure chest that you had to go, like, open up. And so yeah. every every time we would come in, we basically had Ice Crown on farm at this point, we'd come in and we would just power through this match and what you'd see every time is his character Kovacs just run over to the run thing it. kneel down and loot it and then on, and then on voice over IP you just hear fuck <laughs> and that's how it went <laughs> that's so accurate <laughs> all right cuz i don't ahead. know if, i don't know if i was master looting but i didn't care i was just like <laughs> i got to see if it was like fuck but anyway so the way that fight worked was uh, you had to have your your teammates like load up the cannons and shoot at the enemy gunship. So uh, I figured it should be something to do with that mechanic. Uh, so it's a it's a seven mana four seven taunt. I made it a mech just because. Um, <laughs> and it says whenever whenever you play a minion, deal damage equal to its attack to a random enemy. Um, so. It was it was hard for me to gauge how combo-y and OP this would be, but basically, you know, you put out a minion and they get to load a cannon and uh, fire fire at the enemy. Uh, and the reason I made it based on their attack is because the gunship, the gun, your gunship strength in uh, in the battle was actually it actually scaled up with right with your, your characters. gear score. So with your yeah, gear score, yeah. So I was like, well, then the stronger the minion is, the better the you know the projectile should be. 
Uh, so it's seven mana, so you can't go combo crazy. Um, but it's I don't know. It's still it's it's so hard to kill at a at a four seven mm-hmm. that you know there's a good chance you'll get your turn eight and your turn eight will be super broken. Right. So I don't know. It might be op. It might be. I, I'm I'm thinking about it and I go back and forth on it because I'm like, yeah, on turn seven, a four seven is pretty guaranteed to live. Um, so then you get you know an eight drop with who knows how much damage on something. But then you've got the rag problem where you don't know what kind of deck you're playing against. Are there divine shields and weenies in play that could absorb the the hit no matter how big it is? So I think I'm thinking maybe it's not quite as op as I initially thought just based on the randomness of it. Yeah. I mean, as long as you're not looking at any kind of mana reduction garbage, like no forest and stuff here. Well, we haven't had that for a bit. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I could see maybe like a like a hand buff strategy being really good. True. And then on turn 10, you're just like, you know, here's three, four fours or something. Yeah. And then, yeah just wreak all kinds of havoc so i don't know mm-hmm. but that's the general idea behind it i like it a lot there there isn't much of this kind of stuff i think like the closest thing i can remember to something like this is uh knife juggler which <laughs> i mean they nerfed him and then you know zoo's not as good as it once was and knife juggler just hasn't seen a lot of play but um, there was also ship's cannon which was just bad. true which is still apparently just wreaking havoc in wild <laughs> Is it? Well, because, I mean, you can play pirates, pirates and... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I actually think Kazakus decks that. are top dog. Really? Yeah, that's what I've heard, though, but I don't I don't fuck with Wild much, so... Yeah. I don't know really what's going on in there. But I, I really like this. It's very cool. Cool. All right, and finally, uh, I decided to do probably the weirdest raid boss that's ever happened in WoW. <laughs> and it's not, it's not really a boss. It's like an ally. So, uh, you would come across this dragon, Valithria Dreamwalker, as you were going through Ice Crown, and you had to do the opposite of what you're used to doing, and you had to heal this this dragon to full. Rather than take its health to zero, you had to take its health from almost zero to full. And meanwhile, you're getting attacked by these waves and waves of undead that are trying to kill her before you can heal her back to full. Mm-hmm. So, I took that, that an cost- awesome fight. Yeah, it really was. And I took that concept and I tr- applied it to this card. So um, it uses kind of the bl- the injured blade master mechanic. She is a four mana four twelve, but don't don't freak out yet. Uh, it battle cry deals six damage to herself, which is the it's the weirdest wording, but that is the wording on injured blade master in all yep. caps like that. Deal four yep. damage to himself. Himself. Whoa. <laughs> So, I'm just trying to be consistent here. Yeah. Uh, so, it comes out as a 4-mana four 4-6, four, which is still a really good minion for 4, but That's it is a legendary. Better than Yeti. Yeah. Yeah, by by 1 HP. But it, she's a legendary. So, there's that. But uh, her text says, When this minion's health is at least 12, deal 6 damage to all other minions. So, that would trigger immediately. Like, if you finish it off with a lesser heal, or yes, you could Divine Spirit her... The turn you throw her out, and her health would double to 12. And the the second her health hits 12, uh, what would happen would be, you know, kind of like that, like you were saying, that slowdown effect that happens sometimes and, Mm -hmm. like, kind of pauses the game for, uh, like, a an animation to occur and she would kind of like like fly float up into the air and then slam back down and it would make a huge shock wave killing everything and by the way that's what would happen when you did finish healing her she would get up and just pwn all of the all of the undead that were trying to attack her she'd just nuke them all yeah she'd just nuke them all and uh good raid yeah it was super cool and uh when she slams back down she would have a different like i'm not dead anymore image yeah and and that's what I, I wrote that cheesy flavor text there um, because it's what she says when you actually complete it. She says, "I am renewed, Isera. Grant me the favor to lay these foul creatures to rest." So nice. That's that's where I went with that. So you you can't do the board wipe again. No, because she becomes a different minion. Yes, that's exactly. Um, if she got bounced to your hand. You'd have a four mana four twelve. 
you are correct on that. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe it's broken. <laughs> Especially, I, I do think it's too strong. Just Okay, I, I think it should at least be five, because a four mana four six is crazy. Right. I do like, think she's OP. Uh, yeah. I mean... But I damage. love the mechanic. Yeah. Like, it's exactly what the boss fight was yeah I, I think you know just tweak some numbers here and there um maybe yeah. she deals herself seven damage uh maybe she's five mana and deals herself you know six still or who knows what it is but uh i, I really like having to work towards something you know that's why i was so excited for like the quest mechanic which ended up basically falling flat um yeah but rather than just being like i'm gonna dragon fire potion on six there it goes like you can try to like set this up you know which is similar to that and then you you still have something on board after the board wipe that was yeah, yeah, yeah. that was my yeah, it's, it's, it's my good thinking. it's it's very it's and regardless of, of numbers conceptually it's yeah. super good word thanks very Sean. very accurate to the to the fight itself which is cool word i'm all about that accuracy yeah so uh do you want to so we have a little bit of uh announcement of a change for the card challenge segment and what we do after the show sometimes when we can which is uh just continue to stream not as part of the show but just uh just for fun of it uh and do you want to do you want to take this one away tell them what we're doing yeah, yeah. So last time we we told you guys that we were kind of changing the rules of like how the card challenge was going to go. Um, since we normally get a lot more submissions, we would only be able to pick the top six, and uh, you know we we would pick one that's the winner. Um, but we you know we hadn't decided what you won or anything. It was just <laughs> like good job, you made the best one. Um, so you know we were just thinking about how we should uh, implement you know viewer matches. So we decided that we'll base it on the card submission winners. So basically, each of us will pick like a favorite card, and uh, we'll play games with those people. Uh, and uh, do you want to do our favorites and then a runner-up? Yeah, yeah. I think we were so thinking like, some, like somewhere people? like the top three kind of thing. Yeah, top three. Yeah. So just just like you know, a challenge needs some kind of uh, a reward thing right yeah, yeah. so and people were people have been saying as we were streaming um that they'd like to you know have a way to kind of do these viewer matches and i think that this was this is a good way to t- kill two yeah. birds with one stone there so absolutely that is gonna be so you know if you want to participate it, it encourages you to show up for the yeah for the show it encourages you to submit cards um so you mm-hmm. know and that's just kind of a minimum thing, too. It's not like we're only going to do three games and then we'll be off. You know, it's just like that's a way to kind of have just like a like a priority system of like, you know, who knows how long we'll be able to stream. But yeah. uh, what we're going to be doing some games with viewers for sure. Yep. All right. But uh, as of right now, we are going to be done with the show and we are going to stream afterwards. So, yep. Hang out for a sec if you would like to check out some of that. And um, if any of you guys that submitted this week, Linus and Dougie Fresh, Stefan Essen, I'm a Dragon, any of you guys are in chat, uh, speak up. We'll we'll do some matches with you right after this short break. Hey guys, Dookie here. We totally forgot to give you guys the new card creation prompt at the end of the show. So I'm just going to throw it in and post here uh, for you guys that weren't there for the live stream. And it's going to be to design a 4th of July themed card because the, our next show is going to be the closest show to the 4th of July. And uh, it could really be anything like it could be some kind of eagle or some kind of explosion or something about freedom get creative get crazy with it it can be funny it can be silly uh you know we won't be judging it super strictly mostly just overall how much we like the creation itself and for those of you that aren't in the united states that's fine you can make a card making fun of us if you want i mean just go nuts but uh that's gonna be the theme so go ahead and uh submit those over at the salty dog twitter at salty dog podcast and uh, we'll be sure to get you guys entries in for the next show. See ya!